Hello, my name is Kelly Rawl and I am the coordinator of Family Engagement, Community Outreach and Teacher Support for HEB ISD. I am so glad that you are joining me today to get a better handle on your child's online learning. I am sure that you already know by now that we've started the 2021 school year online using Canvas and Seesaw in grades pre-K through second grade. Having one new learning platform to learn about is one thing, but two different ones for our littles might seem like a little too much. I understand how you feel, but I want to assure you that it takes both of these programs to ensure that your child is getting the best education in town. I hope that you will see that by the end of our time together. Some of you may be thinking that you no longer need to know about these two learning platforms since your child is returning to the classroom soon. However, we will continue to use both platforms even after students return to the classroom. This won't take long and hopefully it will give you a better idea of what your kiddo is doing all day. Now I have two housekeeping items on the agenda. First of all, so that we have a record of your quote unquote attendance, please type your first and last name and the school that your child attends in the comment box underneath the video on YouTube. The second thing is, if you have a question, please contact me at kellyrawl at hebisd.edu. That's k-e-l-l-y-r-a-l-l -L -L at hebisd.edu. Or 817-399-2180. We have two relatively simple objectives for today's uh, presentation. Number one is to navigate Canvas and number two is to navigate Seesaw. The uh, picture on the right hand corner of your uh, presentation uh, shows you the icon for Canvas and then in the center at the bottom of your slide you see the icon for Seesaw. Um, the first thing your student is going to need to do every day is to log in to ClassLink using the ADFS button. If you are not on the district network, then your student will have to uh, log in using their HEBISD credentials. The first thing that your child will do each day is log in to Canvas. That means they're going to open their class link page and click on the Canvas app. When they do, they're going to see their dashboard and the dashboard is like their landing page or their launch page. Um, but you're going to see some very important things there. Frankly, many of our lower grade teachers are just using Canvas to communicate their schedule, link to their Google attendance tracker, add grades, and then lead the way to Seesaw where most of the teaching and learning will take place. Therefore, this first part of the presentation about Canvas um, will be pretty quick and then we'll move on into Seesaw and that will be the remainder of the presentation. When you look at the dashboard you'll see course cards for each of your child's courses. So you'd probably see things like math, language arts, social studies, science, art, music, and PE. You know all of the major hitters. Uh, if they're in special classes, you'll also see cards for that. Now on the upper right hand side, you're going to see <coughs> uh, the to-do list as well as the coming soon list or coming up list. These lists include things from all of the classes that your child is taking right now. Feel free to poke around and see where everything is. You can click on any card to enter the course and get to work. So. Uh, rather your child can click on any card and then get to work. So one thing that is important for you to remember is that this to-do list includes all the deadlines and due dates that teachers have entered into Canvas for every class. The same thing is true for the coming up. It includes all the things that are coming up that have a due date or a deadline in Canvas. So <clears throat> from this dashboard, you're going to see things about all these different cards. 
Let's take a look inside one of the courses. We'll start by looking at some of the basic parts of the home page before moving on. Notice on the left is your course navigation menu. <clears throat> All of the information found here is specific to this course. If you look on the right side, you'll see the to do and coming up list again, but this time just the items from this course are included on this uh, to do and coming up list. In the center is the main content area. Here you will usually see a welcome message or some basic course information. Each class will have some common pieces, but teachers are allowed to design the layout of their class so, so that it meets the intent of the curriculum and supports the learning of their students. Therefore, you must read each homepage content carefully and look for instructions on how they want you to get started. In this case, the teacher displayed the content under courses in the home page. In addition, she added information that will come on the next slide. If the instructor hasn't given you a clear path to get started, you can always come straight to the module view by clicking on the module button in the course navigation menu. Modules are the primary way of organizing your course content Sometimes modules will be organized by subjects, chapters in the textbook, or by weeks. Here we have an orientation module followed by week two module. So it appears that this instructor has organized his or her class modules by weeks. Modules are a way for the instructor to guide you through the course content in order. On the right side of the dashboard, you can see your to-do list. This will show you assignments, quizzes, and discussions that have a due date. It is important to remember that not every course activity will show on this list, just the items that have a due date set in Canvas. For this reason, you can't rely on this list to show you everything that you may need to do in your course. So be sure to read the syllabus and the course materials carefully to find requirements that aren't set up with a due date in Canvas. When you find them, consider adding them to your course calendar on your own. For example, the to-do list may show a quiz that needs to be taken, but you may still need to read a chapter or watch a video before you can complete the quiz. On the right side of the dashboard, you can see your to-do list. This will show you assignments, quizzes, and discussions that have a due date. It's important to remember that not every course activity will show on this list just the items that have due dates set in Canvas. For this reason, you can't rely on the list to show you everything that you need to do in your course. So be sure to read the syllabus and course materials carefully to find all the requirements, even the ones that aren't set up with a due date in Canvas. When you find them, consider adding them to your course calendar on your own. For example, the to-do list may show a quiz that needs to be taken, but you may have to read a chapter or watch a video before you take the quiz. The View Course Stream button is another handy tool. Now look up in the uh, upper right hand corner and you will see uh, where it says View Course Stream. This is above the to-do list. The View Course Stream button will show you all of your child's assignments in a list format. This information can also be found in the modules. This is another example of course stream from kindergarten. Notice that to get here you have to choose courses on the left and then view course stream on the right. The course calendar is right below view course stream and right below that is view course notifications. The course calendar is right below View Course Stream. It shows uh, all of the assignments on a monthly calendar. Right below that is a View Course Notification button. Uh, we want to always make sure that the course notification settings are enabled so that you don't miss out on any important information. You will get reminders about uh, things that are coming up and this can be very helpful. Also on the home page for specific classes, you will see class information or important links. As you can see on this slide, each circle displays specific information. For example, meeting 
links or Google Meets links uh, will allow the student to meet with the teacher live. Don't forget to check the daily schedule to find out about the time of each meeting. Remember that if you need to meet with different teachers, you need to go to their own homepage and click on Google Meets link from there. Next, you will see Meet the Teacher or All About the Teacher. Here you can find um, the contact information for the teacher and some uh, bio biographical information about her or him. In HEB ISD, we use what is called a MOOSE planning calendar. That stands for Management of Organization Organizational Skills Every Day. This is a communication tool that increases the oppor opportunities for homeschool communication. It looks a little different online, but it is crucial that you check it daily. This is where you'll find class announcements and notes from the teacher and so on with the rest of the circled icons. Remember a couple of slides ago when I told you about the course calendar? Well, here it is in a picture form. Don't forget that the Canvas calendar will only show you the final due dates by default, not the preparatory steps leading up to it. So it's wise to add those yourself. You can view your calendar in either weekly, monthly, or agenda style views, and your instructor might, instructor might use the scheduler tool to set appointments for things like exam reviews or class presentations. If you want to see all of your due dates for every class in one place, then you can go back to your dashboard and find your global or course navigation menu and click on the Canvas calendar. I hate to sound like a broken record, but the calendar will show you items that have a specific due date, like assignments, quizzes, and discussions. As I mentioned before, this is where you can add your custom calendar events by clicking on the plus button or just by clicking on the day that you want to add an event. This is useful if you want to remember to do something uh, ahead of time, like reading a chapter in a book before the quiz on Friday. This is the Canvas Studio. It's the place where your child can create a video of him or herself and share it with others. Keep in mind that since your teacher is using Seesaw, your child may create their own video over there in Seesaw. On this screen, uh, you'll see that the teacher is giving directions to click on your homeroom teacher's name to take you to your Seesaw assignment. We'll be talking about how to use Seesaw on the rest of the slides here. But before we do that, I want to get your attention uh, to the bottom of the page. You will always have a next and a previous button to move through your assignments. Use these to go forward for new information and backwards to review earlier information. Now let's look at Seesaw on the iPad. Your student will have to log in uh, after they click on the Seesaw button or icon on their ClassLink homepage. Uh, your teacher may send home a learning code or she might tell you that you don't need one. Uh, if you still have difficulty with logging in, please uh, contact me and I will get back to you ASAP. You may also send an email, email to your child's teacher. When you get to this screen, click on I am a student and then enter the code that your teacher gave you. Do not click sign in with Google and do not enter your email address and password. Only enter the code. So now you're logged into your Seesaw Journal. Your teacher has actually added an activity for you to complete. When you complete an activity, make sure that you have read the directions that your teacher provided. This example also, also includes audio instructions. To listen to the instructions, just click play instructions. The first part of the activity that needs to be completed is, this is how I write my name. If you forgot what the instructions said on, on this assignment, look at the top where it says view instructions. It will show you all of the directions written out. You can also listen to the audio version of the instructions. Plus, you can look at the sample again. Now you can see that you need to use the pencil tool to write your name. The pencil tools are down at the bottom of the page. In fact, you can use more than just a pencil. You have a pencil, a pen, a highlighter, and an eraser. You can change the color on the right-hand side. You can change your name color to your favorite one. 
Let's say you actually made a mistake and you need to erase it. Just hit the eraser, erase it, and it disappears like magic. Next, you need to add a picture of yourself. Now you could use one of those amazing drawing features, or you could use the camera feature. When you click the camera, you have two choices. You can actually take a photo, or you can upload a photo that is already on your device. To take a photo using your camera, smile, and then press the camera button to take the picture. Now, let's say you didn't like it, it was a little blurry, and you want to do it again. You just click the three dots and click delete. Then you'll hit the camera button again, smile for the camera, and take a new picture. To change the size of the photo, click on the corner and drag it to make it larger or smaller. You can also rotate your photo by moving around the round arrow. There are more options. If you click the three dots, you can make the photo go in front or back. You can also lock it where it stays in place and does not move. The next thing you need to do is add your favorite color. You can easily use one of the drawing tools or you can use a shape. Over on the left hand side, click the three dots and then click shapes. Choose a shape and move it wherever you want it to go. Be sure that you change the color of the shape to your favorite color. In the upper left corner, you can see the shape in its original color. In the lower right, you can see where the heart shape has been moved and the color has been changed to your favorite color. It looks much better now. If you are not finished and need to stop for now, then save it as a draft. When you click draft, it's going to save it and it's not going to send it to your teacher quite yet. When you are ready to log back into your Seesaw account and finish your activity, then you're going to click edit now. You're now able to continue working on your activity. The last feature I'd like to show you in the drawing feature of Seesaw is the ability to add audio on top of any photo or drawing. To add your own audio on the left hand side, you'll, you'll click the microphone. Uh, you can introduce yourself by saying, my name is Sam. This is a picture of me and I'm 32 years old. My favorite color is purple. Once you're finished with your audio, audio recording, you are going to click done. If you want to re-record, just hit this button here in the center. To listen to your recording, press play. If you are finished with your entire activity, you are going to hit the green check mark at the top of your screen. Here is where you send it to your teacher and your teacher will be able to approve it on the teacher seesaw account. All right, so now you have finished the activity and it goes directly into your journal. You can also like different activities or journal posts, and you can leave a written comment or even an audio comment if you would like to. Another feature you need to know about is your inbox. Your inbox is like email in Seesaw. Check it frequently because your teachers might send important information to you. If there is a new message, there would be a little red box and it would show a number. That number shows how many messages you have in your inbox. Be sure to read them all. On this screen, I don't have any new messages. If there were a new message, there would be a little red box and it would show a number that indicates how many messages that you need to read. Notice that in the same area as your inbox, you might also select journal or activities. If you click on activities, it will show you class activities. These are all of the different activities that you have completed. If you see waiting for a response, that means that it is an activity that you still need to complete. All right, let's head back to the journal. Now that we've returned to your journal, let's take a look at your toolbox. The toolbox shows you six different ways you can show your learning. At the top, you will see a green add button. Click on that and your toolbox will appear. Your first option is to take a photo. Click on the camera, take your picture, and then add it to your Seesaw journal. Remember, we did that earlier when we added your picture. The second way to show your work is by adding a drawing, which we also did in the example earlier. Next, you can add a video of yourself reading or a video touring your learning environment. Don't forget to add it to your journal. If you click on Upload, you can upload photos, videos, and PDF files directly from your Google Drive. 
Another option is to add a note. You could write a story or a summary of your learning. Hit the check mark and that will be added to your Seesaw journal. Finally, you can add any link from any website that is school appropriate to your journal to share with your teacher. As you can see, the toolbox gives you many options to show your learning in your journal. If you hit the X on your toolbox menu, you will see a message asking if you are sure you want to start over. If you do, then hit the red delete button. If not, hit cancel. To log out of your Seesaw journal, in the top left hand corner, click on your name and then you can, can click on the gear and press sign out to sign back in. You will need to use the same home learning code that you used in the beginning. These home learning codes will be good for 90 days. Once those 90 days are up, your teacher will just need to give you a new home learning code. I'm so thankful that you are able to show your learning with me. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to your teacher. To log out of your Seesaw journal, look in the top left hand corner to find your name. Click on your name and then you can click on the gear and press sign out. To sign back in, you will use the same learning code that you used from the beginning of school. These learning codes will be good for 90 days. Once those 90 days are up, then your teacher will give you a new one. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please be sure to reach out to your teacher.